Hi, this is Jeff Spence, your Math 120 instructor for the Community College of Denver, and this is our video lecture over section 12.3. So last section we covered measures of center, which are the, you know, uh, ways to find the middle of a data set. We talked about the mean and the median and the mode. Mainly we use the mean, which is the average, and the median, which is the middle of the data set when we list it in order. But another main uh, way to describe data, numerical data, is to look at the measures of spread, how spread out the data is. Is it very close, closely clustered together or is it very spread out? So we have measures of dispersion that tell us how spread out a data set is. The two measures that we're going to find are called the range and the standard deviation. So the range is really simple. Uh, it's really just to describe how wide the data set is. Um, and to do that, you just take the largest or the highest data value and you subtract the lowest data value. And that tells you how wide the data set is. So it says Honolulu, excuse me, hottest day is 89 degrees and its coldest day is 61. The range in temperature is 28 degrees. So that could be the range in there and their highs for the year or something like that. And so the range of temperatures would be 28 degrees, which isn't that great. Uh, but Honolulu is pretty close to the equator, so not a big range in temperatures. Another one says, figure shows the age of the, the age of the five oldest U.S. presidents at the start of their U.S. term. Find the age range for the five oldest U.S. presidents. So uh, Reagan was 69, Taylor was 64. The high value minus the low value is five years. So there's a range of five years for the oldest presidents. Okay, <clears throat> now... We're going to take those f uh, five ages, 69, 68, 65, 64, 64, and prepare you to uh, do a little prep to uh, teach you about how to compute the standard deviation. So um, we're going to learn about wh what's called a deviation first, because uh, the, the term that we're, or the, the thing that we're going to find is called the standard deviation, and we're going to learn about what a deviation is. So let's say we have these five data values and we were to compute the mean of those five data values or the average. So we add them all up, divide by five. The average age of these uh, five oldest presidents is 66. So what is a deviation? A deviation is always the data item minus the mean. So in other words, the distance that the data item is from the mean. So um, let me pause this. So to compute each deviation, we just take the data item minus the mean. So for the first age, it's 69. The mean was 66. So we subtract that and we get 3. So in other words, the data item, 69, is 3 years above the mean. So if you look at each one of these, 68 is 2 years above the mean. 65 is, has a deviation of negative 1, which means that 65 is 1 year below the mean. So negative deviations mean below the mean, and positive de deviations mean above the mean. And you'll see that when we add the deviations, 3 plus 2 is 5, and negative 1 plus negative 2 plus negative 2 is negative 5, the, the positive deviations and the negative deviations always cancel, and the, the sum of the deviations is always 0. So that's a little bit of a problem for the standard deviation, and we'll see that when we compute it in the formula. So here's the formula. Um, ultimately, it's this formula at the end, but it shows you step by step. So the first thing when computing the standard deviation is you need to find the mean of the data items. So um, once you find that, then you can find the deviation, which is always the data item minus the mean. Once we do that, since the deviations cancel each other, we need to square all the deviations, and that's what we do. The next step is to add all those deviations up. Then once we add them up, we divide by the number of data items minus 1, and then take the square root. Now, I know this formula might seem daunting at first, but let's just look at an example on how we can organize this in a pretty orderly fashion. So, we're going to find the standard deviation of this data set. So we already found the mean of 66, and then we're going to or, uh, organize these deviations in a table, like we did before. So first column of, or sorry, the first column of the table is the data items. The second column is the deviation, so we take each data item and subtract the mean. And then it's nice and easy in the third column to take those deviations and square them. Notice that when you square any number, it will be a positive number. Okay, That's something I noticed earlier on in the class that some of you were missing. But remember, when you square a negative number, it's a positive number, and that's why we're doing this. So here are all the deviations squared. Then what we're supposed to do, the third step, is to take the sum of the squared deviations. 
So really what we have to do is we fill in this table, we write each data, data item, we find all their deviations, which just means take each data item, subtract the mean, then we square all those numbers from column two, and then we once we get column three, we add all those numbers up. And the sum of nine plus four plus one plus four plus four is 22. So we're about two thirds of the way there, we're almost done. Once we get the sum of the deviations, so I'm kind of jumping back, once we get the sum of the deviations, we take that and we divide by the number of data items minus one. So that's what they're showing here. We got the sum of 22. The number of data items was five. So five minus one is four. And 22 divided by four is 5.5. Then the last step is to take the square root of that result. And the square root of 5.5 is 2.35. So 2.35 we call the standard deviation of the data set. And really, generally what that means is uh, 2.35 is the average distance from the mean of 66 for this data set. So it tells you the spread of the data set in terms of the average distance from the mean. So it's a somewhat complicated formula, but if you practice it a couple times, you'll get used to the steps and it's pretty easy. So good luck. We'll see you next time.